Matthew Henry's Commentary on the Whole Bible 2 Chronicles 22 We read, in the foregoing chapter, of the carrying away of Jehoram's sons and his wives, but here we find one of his sons and one of his wives left, his son Ahaziah and his wife Athaliah, both reserved to be the shame and plague of his family. 1. Ahaziah was the shame of it as a partaker, 1. In the sin, and 2. In the destruction of the house of Ahab, verses 1-9. to 2. Athaliah was the plague of it, for she destroyed all the seed royal, and usurped the throne, verses 10-12. to Ahaziah slain by Jehu, 884 BC. 1. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem made Ahaziah his youngest son king in his stead, for the band of men that came with the Arabians to the camp had slain all the eldest. So Ahaziah the son of Jehoram king of Judah reigned. 240 and two years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Athaliah the daughter of Omri. 3. He also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, for his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. For wherefore he did evil in the sight of the Lord like the house of Ahab, for they were his counselors after the death of his father to his destruction. 5. He walked also after their counsel, and went with Jehoram the son of Ahab king of Israel to war against Hazael king of Syria at Ramoth Gilead, and the Syrians smote Joram. 6. And he returned to be healed in Jezreel, because of the wounds which were given him at Ramah, when he fought with Hazael king of Syria. And Azariah the son of Jehoram king of Judah went down to see Jehoram the son of Ahab at Jezreel, because he was sick. 7. And the destruction of Ahaziah was of God by coming to Joram, for when he was come, he went out with Jehoram against Jehu, Jehu the son of Nimshi, whom the Lord had anointed to cut off the house of Ahab. 8. And it came to pass, that, when Jehu was executing judgment upon the house of Ahab, and found the princes of Judah, and the sons of the brethren of Ahaziah, that ministered to Ahaziah, he slew them. 9. And he sought Ahaziah, and they caught him, for he was hid in Samaria, and brought him to Jehu, and when they had slain him, they buried him, because, said they, he is the son of Jehoshaphat, who sought the Lord with all his heart. So the house of Ahaziah had no power to keep still the kingdom. We have here an account of the reign of Ahaziah, a short reign, of one year only, yet long enough, unless it had been better. He was called Jehoahaz, chapter 21 verse 17, here he is called Ahaziah, which is the same name, and of the same signification, only the words of which it is compounded are transposed. He is here said to be forty-two years old when he began to reign, verse 2, which could not be, for his father, his immediate predecessor, was but forty when he died, and it is said, 2 Kings 8 verse 26, that he was twenty-two years old when he began to reign. Some make this forty-two to be the age of his mother Athaliah, for in the original it is, he was the son of forty-two years, that is, the son of a mother that was of that age, and justly is her age put for his, in reproach to him, because she managed him, and did what she would she, in effect, reigned, and he had little more than the title of king. Many good expositors are ready to allow that this, with some few more such difficulties, arise from the mistake of some transcriber, who put forty-two for twenty, twenty-two, and the copies by which the error should have been corrected might be lost. Many ancient translations read it here twenty-two. Few books are now printed without some errata, yet the authors do not therefore disown them, nor are the errors of the press imputed to the author, but the candid reader amends them by the sense, or by comparing them with some other part of the work, as we may easily do this. The history of Ahaziah's reign is briefly summed up in two clauses, verses 3 and 4. His mother and her relations were his counselors to do wickedly, and it was to his destruction. 1. He did wickedly. Though by a special providence of God he was preserved alive, when all his brethren were slain, and reserved for the crown, notwithstanding, he was the youngest of them though the inhabitants of Jerusalem, when they had buried his father ingloriously, made him king, in hopes he would take warning by that not to tread in his steps, but would do better for himself and his kingdom yet he was not influenced by the favors either of God or man, but walked in the way of the house of Ahab, did evil in. The sight of the Lord like them, verses 3 and 4, that is, he worshipped, Balaam and Ashtaroth, supposing, as the learned Bishop Patrick thinks, that by these demons, as mediators, they might have easier access to the supreme Newman, the God of Israel, or that these they might resort to at all times and 
for all matters as being nearer at hand, and not of so high a dignity, but of a middle nature between the immortal God and mortal men deified heroes, so they worship them as the Church of Rome does saints and angels. I am apprehensive that they looked upon Jehovah, the God of their fathers, to be altogether such a one as these Balaam, and them to be as great and as good as he, nay, upon one account, more eligible inasmuch as these Balaam encouraged in their worshippers all manner of lewdness and sensuality, which the God of Israel strictly forbade. 2. He was counseled by his mother and her relations to do so. She was his counselor, verse 3, and so were they, after the death of his father, verse 4. While his father lived he took care to keep him to idolatry, but when he was dead, the house of Ahab feared lest his father's father's miserable end should deter him from it, and therefore they were very industrious to keep him closely to it, and to make him seven times more a child of hell than themselves. The counsel of the ungodly is the ruin of many young persons when they are setting out in the world. This young prince might have had better advice if he had pleased from the princes and the judges, the priests and the Levites, that had been famous in his good grandfather's time for teaching in the knowledge of God, but the house of Ahab humored him, and he walked after their counsel, gave himself up to be led by them, and did just as they would have him. Thus do those debase and destroy themselves that forsake the divine guidance. 3. He was counseled by them to his destruction. So it proved. Those that counsel us to do wickedly counsel us to our destruction, while they fawn, and flatter, and pretend friendship, they are really our worst enemies. Those that debauch young men destroy them. It was bad enough that they exposed him to the sword of the Syrians, drawing him into join with Joram king of Israel in an expedition to Ramoth Gilead, where Joram was wounded, an expedition that was not for his honor. Those that give us bad counsel in the affairs of religion, if regarded by us, may justly be made of God our counselors to do foolishly in our own affairs. But that was not all, by engaging him in an intimacy with Joram king of Israel, they involved him in the common ruin of the house of Ahab. He came on a visit to Joram, verse 6, just at the time that Jehu was executing the judgment of God upon that idolatrous family, and so was cut off with them, verses 7 to 9. Here, 1. See and dread the mischief of bad company of joining in with sinners. If not the infection, yet let the destruction be feared. Come out from Babylon, that falling house, Revelation 18 verse 4. 2. See and acknowledge the justice of God. His providence brought Ahaziah, just at this fatal juncture, to see Joram, that he might fall with him and be taken as in a snare. This we had an account of before, 2 Kings 9 verses 27 and 28. It is here added that he was decently buried, not as Jehoram, whose dead body was cast into Naboth's vineyard, 2 Kings 9 verse 26, and the reason given is because he was the son, that is, the grandson, of good Jehoshaphat, who sought the Lord with his heart. Thus is he remembered with honor long after his death, and some respect shown even to his degenerate unworthy seed for his sake. The memory of the just is blessed, but the name of the wicked shall rot. Athaliah usurps the throne, 884 BC. 10 But when Athaliah the mother of Ahaziah saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal of the house of Judah. 11 But Jehoshabeth, the daughter of the king, took Josh the son of Ahaziah, and stole him from among the king's sons that were slain, and put him and his nurse in a bedchamber. So Jehoshabeth, the daughter of King Jehoram, the wife of Jehoiada the priest, for she was the sister of Ahaziah, hid him from Athaliah, so that she slew him not. 12 And he was with them hid in the house of God six years, and Athaliah reigned over the land. We have here what we had before, 2 Kings 11 verse 1 etc. 1. A wicked woman endeavoring to destroy the house of David, that she might set up a throne for herself upon the ruins of it. Athaliah barbarously cut off all the seed royal, verse 10, perhaps intending to transmit the crown of Judah after herself to some of her own relations, that though her family was cut off in Israel by Jehu it might be planted in Judah. 2. A good woman effectually preserving it from being wholly extirpated. One of the late king's sons, a child of a year old, was rescued from among the dead, and saved alive by the care of Jehoiada's wife, verses 11 and 12, that a lamp might be ordained for God's anointed. For no word of God shall fall to the ground, 